Hey loves, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you that are brand new, welcome to my channel. If you guys are not yet subscribed, please make sure you guys hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any of the updates that I will be posting as it relates to my journey. So this week I wanted to do a highly requested video. This is probably the number one question I get asked all the time, either on social media or through email or even in the comments. In my videos people always want to know what I did to have a successful IVF cycle so I've done videos in the past when I was preparing for my IVF cycle just letting you guys know like the supplements I was taking and some of the things that I was doing but now that I am done with my IVF cycle and I'm four months pregnant I decided to take all the stuff that I did and put it in one video so that you guys will know exactly what helped me have success this IVF cycle. So I, like as I said, I made videos that are kind of similar to these. So I'll link all of those videos up top as I'm talking about them so that you guys can reference them if you want more information so I don't like say the same thing over and over again. So I have to start this video by saying two things. Number one, everybody is different, so the things that may have worked for one person may not always work for the other person. And the things that help me find success may be different from the things that help you. So I have to start off by saying that if you try all of these things or some of these things and whatever happens, this is what helped me in my situation. And I hope that it helps you as well. The second thing I have to say is I did do additional testing in my IVF cycle, which also may have increased our chances so i did the era test and i did the pgs testing which i will talk about a little bit later in the video but those are also things that you have to consider if you are having failed ivf cycles or you're not finding success perhaps you might want to try looking into a little bit further testing for genetics or for your uterine lining and so I think I really do think that the ERA test is what has helped me have success this cycle as well as doing these things so I'm going to get right into the video and let you guys know all the things I did that helped me have a successful IVF transfer this last time so the number one thing I did different from this cycle from my previous cycle which was not successful is I did acupuncture. I started acupuncture about 90 days before my IVF cycle. So I don't know if it's one of those things you can just try like the week of or just go on your transfer day. I do really believe in Chinese medicine and I do really believe that it has a lot of amazing health benefits for us. And so I think having that time even before you start your IVF cycle, doing acupuncture will help with your blood flow, will help with stress, anxiety, with sleep, with so much that, you know, there's so many factors that go into getting pregnant and staying pregnant and I think that acupuncture really does help a lot with a lot of those things. So the number one thing is acupuncture. Some people do not like acupuncture or don't feel it helps them. I really feel that acupuncture helped me. So that was the number one thing. And then going along with the acupuncture is I did the Chinese herbs all the way up until my stems. I did like maybe 60 days of herbs, 30 or 60 days of herbs. It was like one box, so however much that was, and I drank them twice a day. They were very, very nasty, but what the herbs helped with were the kidney functions, and I'm learning that there are so many different other organs that are necessary in order to have a pregnancy. You can't just make sure your uterus is good or make sure there's you know one or two things that are going well for you. You have to make sure like the whole body is functioning the way that it needs to in order to have success so I did the Chinese herbs which really helped and I did notice that my circulation was better like my hands and my feet weren't as cold and I do think the herbs really helped as well so um, on top of the herbs I did daily smoothies and I will put a link up top it's my fertility smoothie which I researched myself and I put all those things together myself so there are things that I really do believe that helps when you're trying to conceive and this can even be if you're not doing um, fertility treatment you can just drink the smoothie if you're just trying to conceive naturally or if you just want to be healthy um, so I will put that up top and I drank those every day and I started like I said like 90 days before to make sure that I was like getting everything built up in my system and I do really believe that those smoothies helped with 
my overall health and making sure I got all the vitamins and nutrients that I needed in order to go into an IVF cycle. So you guys can check that out if you would like to. Um, another thing I did is I cut out eating at restaurants or eating takeout because I was taught that it was very important to cook warm foods at home using organic vegetables and whatever it is you can find. So my acupuncturist was a major part, I think, in helping me to get pregnant. She was very, very knowledgeable. She was a Chinese acupuncturist. She studied Chinese medicine. Very, very knowledgeable lady. And so she taught me the importance of cooking at home because you don't have all those extra preservatives in your food and you're not eating from BPA lined. Like when you do takeout and they put everything in like plastic containers, all those things can have BPA in it, in it which can affect your fertility. And so for like 90 days, I cooked at home every day or every other day. I try not to use a microwave. Um, I cooked, use organic vegetables, and I tried to use as few ingredients from a box or like the freezer as possible. Everything was home cooked. And so I do believe that helped me have the nutrients that I needed in order to have a successful IVF cycle. So I think those were some of the major, major things that I did that I changed from cycle one to cycle two. So as far as the supplements, which is another question I get all the time, people always ask me what supplements I took. I took a calcium, magnesium, and zinc blend, and those are all very important when you're trying to conceive. I took 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C. Um, I took about 2,000 IUs of vitamin D, and 400 IUs of vitamin E, and I also took 1,000 milligrams of fish oil. And those were the main things um, as far as like daily supplements. I also took DHEA, which is supposed to help with your egg quality, and I took 75 milligrams of that, and then I took ubiquinol. The first cycle, I took CoQ10, and ubiquinol is what CoQ10 turns into, I think, or the other way around. Whatever the case is, CoQ10 and ubiquinol is the same thing, but ubiquinol is a more... Um, potent I want to say like form of it and so I took 400 milligrams of the ubiquinol as well which is supposed to help with your egg quality so those are all of the supplements I took I, my husband and I we did a video a little bit before our second IVF cycle where we talked about all of our supplements and I will link that video up top as well because you have to remember your embryo is made up of the woman's egg and the man's sperm so it needs to have healthy both healthy parts in order to make one good embryo. So I'll link the, that up top for you guys as well. So the next things that I can say I did is I increased my uh, liquid intake. So I started drinking 100 ounces of liquid a day and I tried to drink about 80, 80 to 84 ounces of water and then I drank tea. I would drink raspberry leaf tea or ginger tea or peppermint tea. Those are the only ones because I wanted to avoid caffeine. So 100 ounces of liquid and it's so important for you to hydrate your eggs and hydrate your, yourself and your organs just overall in order to have um, good quality eggs, good quality embryos. So that's another thing I did. I increased my water and my liquid intake. I cut out dairy for 90 days, which was very hard, but some people may disagree with this because some people say you need like the calcium and the vitamin D or whatever, but from what I was taught by my acupuncturist, because dairy has so many hormones, because you know the milk has so many hormones and then they use it for the cheese and the butter and ice cream, I just completely cut it out and I substituted my dairy with coconut milk or almond milk or whatever it is i could substitute that did not contain any dairy so that was a major thing was no dairy and no sugar because sugar can be very very bad for your eggs and your embryo and so i cut out the sugar and if i needed like sweet snacks something if i wanted something sweet i would eat fruit or dried um dried berries or like raisins or something like that so that was another big thing um and I think the last thing is, what else did I do? I ate pomegranates. So instead of drinking the palm juice, I actually cut open the pomegranates and ate the little seeds out of there just to make sure I had the antioxidants because it's very important for your egg quality that you get as many antioxidants from like berries and 
uh, fruit and pomegranates. So I did that as well. And I also stayed very active. I walked every day, I jogged a couple times a week and I also hiked every week. And so I was constantly trying to get the blood flowing, keeping up my cardio to make sure that I was staying in shape and um, just allowing the blood to continue to flow and make sure that my egg quality was as good as it could possibly be. So that's all the things I did to prepare for my IVF cycle. Um, as I said earlier, I did the ERA test and I did a whole video about the ERA test and my results, which I will link up top as well. The ERA, te ERA test pretty much just tests the, the amount of progesterone in your lining to make sure that your uterus is receptive enough for your embryo because if you put your embryo in a hostile environment, it would not be able to thrive. So I did the ERA test and learned that I needed 24 additional hours of progesterone. So I really, really think that that ERA test is one of the main reasons why I am pregnant right now because I would have never known that I had a low amount of progesterone in my lining and that I needed more in order to make my IVF successful. So I did the ERA test. We also did PGS testing, the pregenetic screening, which I think is very important, but there are so many different opinions about the PGS testing. And we did the PGS testing and we sent off four. We had three that were normal and we had one embryo that had monosomy 10, which is like a defect where they would be deformed physically and mentally. Their mental development would be a lot slower. And so I feel like by doing the PGS test, we were able to rule out having put in an embryo that may have had a birth defect. And I think it over in the long run, it saved us a lot of heartache and pain by potentially either having a miscarriage or by giving birth to a baby that may have deformities or may have mental issues or something like that. So that for me is very important, the PGS testing, but I know some people, you know, they don't believe in it, but I do believe that the PGS testing is another reason why I'm pregnant now because it allows you to determine which one of your embryos are normal and that you have a higher chance of pregnancy with a normal PGS tested embryo. So. Those are all the things I did to prepare for my transfer. And so I just have a few things I did after transfer that I think helped me a lot in order to have success this round that I'm gonna go through pretty quickly, but I think they're really super important. So after transfer, I rested for three or four days on the couch. I did not get up and do a whole lot of moving around. I put my feet up on the couch. I know this isn't always possible for people who have full-time jobs, but if you can take at least one or two days off after transfer, I think that it really does make a big difference. So I rested, I had acupuncture both before and after transfer on the same day, right before my embryo transfer and then right after my transfer and then three days after transfer, which is right around implantation time, which is very important to make sure that your embryo implants so that you can be pregnant. So um, yes, I rested, I had acupuncture. Um, I did not look up any symptoms. Last cycle when I had my first transfer, I was a mess. I was very anxious and I was constantly Googling every symptom, trying to see if the things I felt were good or bad signs and the honest truth is every symptom that you feel can either be good or bad because pms symptoms and pregnancy symptoms can almost like mirror each other so if you're looking up this one symptom and you're trying to see if it means you're pregnant it could mean you're pregnant or it could mean your period is coming so i just stay off of google completely this time i just journal keeping track of all of the symptoms and I did the video diary as well which I'll link up top where I told you guys what I was feeling every single day for my whole 10 day wait. So I ate the pineapple core and Brazil nuts from like two or three days after transfer up until like seven or eight days after tra transfer because um, that's around the time implantation occurs. Like I did eat those for let's say four or five days. I did start testing this cycle six days past transfer. I did not test the first cycle and I think that testing the cycle helped ease my anxiety because um, I didn't have to wait the full 10 days to find out if I was 
pregnant or not. So some people want to wait because they want to hold on to those 10 days of being pregnant and knowing that they're carrying their embryo and they don't want a negative test to kind of like ruin their mental. But I feel that testing helped me with anxiety because it um, allowed me to know beforehand if it was going to be positive or negative. So I did that and I did not test the first cycle. And the last thing I did is I continued my weekly acupuncture all the way up until I was 12 weeks pregnant. And then after 12 weeks, I started going to acupuncture every month. And I also go to the chiropractor as well. So I really think that's all that I did. I mean, that's a lot. <coughs> like that's all but it is a lot and as i said you can pick and choose which ones you feel will be best for you to try um some people will not do the herbs or won't do acupuncture and acupuncture gets really expensive we were paying 70 dollars a session and i was going every week for three months and then up until i was 12 weeks so you do the math and let me know how much money i could have saved if i didn't do acupuncture but some people, you know, might not do the smoothies or whatever, but you know, I just wanted to share everything that I did that helped me and because I always want to help my TTC sisters out. I want everyone to have success, to get their BFP, to have pregnancy, to have their baby. So I wanted to do this video to share everything that helped me and I hope that it will help you guys as well. If you guys have any other questions about anything, you guys can always leave me some questions down in the comments or all of my social media and email information is always down below in the description box if you want to get in touch with me i am pretty good at responding to messages and emails and cheering people on whenever i can so you guys are always welcome to do that but i think overall that's the end of the video i don't know if i missed anything of course I couldn't remember every single thing I did, but I think that's really the gist of it all. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have an amazing week. If any of you are preparing for an IVF cycle or an IUI, or if you're just trying it naturally, you, I, you guys are always in my thoughts and my prayers. And I'll be back next time with another update. Bye.